Americans, I wouldn't come here. I'd get on the first plane and fly straight home. You're a silly girl, Jenny. I don't know what you mean. You know what I'm talking about. Him. You can't mean our gardener, Wheat. No, Mrs. Umney. I'm not talking about Mr. Wheat. I'm talking about Sir Simon. The ghost. The less said about him, my dear, the better. Do you think her ladyship has told the new buyers about Sir Simon? It's not our place to speculate. I do hope he'll behave. Scared me half to death one night he did. I thought you never saw him. Never have, but I heard him coming up the stairs in his suit of armor, rattling his chains. I do hope they won't notice the stain on the rug. Well, they're bound to see it and ask about it. If we say nothing, they may suspect nothing. That would be the solace, Mrs. Umney. Good morning, my lady. We was discussing the ghost. Blood red. Nothing will wash it out. Canterville Chase won't seem the same in the hands of a stranger, my lady. With taxes and all, I can't afford to keep it up. Mr. and Mrs. Otis are giving me a marvelous price. And I may be giving notice. That isn't sporting of you, Jenny. It wouldn't be cricket to leave the Americans without some staff, at least in the beginning. Besides, every member of your family has been in service here. Uh, run along, Jenny. See that there are fresh towels on the washstand. Yes, ma'am. How large a family, ma'am? Two girls, teenagers. One is a year older than the other. Mrs. Otis's sister will also be in residence. I appreciate you staying on, Mrs. Umney. It'll make things easier for the Americans. I think of Canterville Chase as my home, ma'am. Happily, you and Sir Simon seem to get on. I always speak respectfully of him. Perhaps he appreciates that. They're coming up to talk to me, lady. How very punctual. I don't think Sir Simon's going to like straight at the ball this place. That's enough, Wendy. Wendy, you're always lagging behind. I'm hurrying as best I can. Will you let the girls go down? Oh, sorry, didn't mean to burst in on anyone. <laughs> Quite all right. You're Wendy, I imagine. No, I'm Pam. Oh, and I'm out of breath. <laughs> You Lady Canterville? I have that honor. You're the first lady we've ever met. She means lady, you know, with a title? I quite understand. Weeds, please get the luggage. Certainly, madam. I hope you girls will enjoy living here. It's terrific. I'm going to love it here. I hope so. It's going to be so much fun exploring. Exploring it. She's got this crazy idea she wants to be an archaeologist. What on earth for? Like digging in the earth in old ruins, covering herself with dust. Stupid if you ask me. No one's asking you. I'm going to explore every room in this place. Every room? What's behind the trees? It's a walled up chamber. Who walled it up? I thought I asked you girls not to charge ahead. What is Lady Canterville going to think? I think they're charming. <laughs> you must be a diplomat, Lady Canterville. Takes one where my daughters are concerned. I'm hoping a good English boarding school will calm them down. We don't want to go to boarding school. But that's the reason why you're going. Boarding school. Yuck. Ah, Lady Canterville. How nice to see you again. Didn't keep you waiting, I trust. Uh, right on time. Uh, this is Mrs. Umney, the housekeeper I spoke of. I bid you welcome to Canterville Chase. Chase? Who's Canterville and who's he chasing? Canterville Chase is the name of this place. Chase is an old English word, which means manor or lodge. Oh. I think we'll have tea now. Yes, my lady. You're Mrs. Otis's sister. Our pleasure to be here, Lady Canterville. Uh, please, sit down. I wanted to speak to you one last time before we sign the final papers. No problem, I trust. That would depend entirely on what one means by a problem. What do you mean, problem? I have not cared to live in Canterville Chase myself since my great aunt, the Dowager Duchess of Bolton, was frightened into a fit. Frightened? A fit? A fit from which she never fully recovered. What frightened her? Two skeleton hands were placed on her shoulders as she was dressing for dinner. Two skeleton hands? I feel bound to tell you, Mr. and Mrs. Otis, that the ghost has been seen by several living members of my family. Sounds marvelous to me. Local color, huh? They're better than we hoped for. Who is the ghost? Sir Simon de Canterville. Was he wicked? Infamous. A villain and a scoundrel. Great. None of you, I feel, realize the gravity of the situation. Sir Simon is not to be taken lightly. Ghosts don't mean the same things to Americans as they do to the English. <coughs> what we ought to do is catch Sir Simon, put him in a cage, and sell him to a circus. 
People would pay to see a caged ghost. That's odd. Thunder is such a lovely day. Sir Simon has a habit of darkening rooms and causing thunder when he's displeased. I think he took a, an exception to your remark about putting him in a cage. Well, I'm sure we'll come to terms with Sir Simon. After the unfortunate incident with my aunt, most of the servants left, except for Mrs. Umney, of course. She has a certain feeling for the spirit world. There is a maid, too, isn't there? Jenny. I, however, I have doubts about her staying. Put your fears to rest, Lady Canterville. This house is exactly what we're looking for. Exactly. We'll take it. Spook and all. You mustn't refer to Sir Simon as a spook. If he shows up, we'll confront him with good old American know-how. He'll soon learn to keep his place. If you don't mind a ghost in the house, it's all right with me. Only you must remember I warned you. We'll take our chances. It's splendid. If you'll excuse me, I'll get the final papers. Oh, of course. That's the best news I've ever heard. Our own private ghost. What a strange story. Virginia, Lady Canterville's not the sort of woman who would lie. Oh, she believes in what she says, up to a point. I bet there isn't a manor house, or a castle, or a chase in all of England without a resident ghost floating about. It helps sell property. Then you don't believe her story? Because we're Americans, Lady Canterville probably thinks the ghost will cinch the deal. She's awfully anxious to unload the place. Reverse psychology? Precisely. I was hoping it was for real. Take my word for it. If there is a ghost floating about, it will probably turn out to be a whistle of wind in the bell tower or something. Beg pardon, Governor, I need the keys to the car trunk. Oh, of course. Your weeds, I presume? That's right, sir. George Weeds. Finest gardener here in Barlitz. Weeds? What a wonderful name for a gardener. It was my father's name, too. Excuse me, ma'am. China or Ceylon? How is that? The tea? Oh. The china, I think. Very good, ma'am. What on earth is this? It looks like something's been spilled on the road. Yes. Blood has spilt on that spot. Blood? blood? Yes, blood. How horrible. I must say, you're putting on a good show, Mrs. Omni. I speak the truth, sir. Well, I don't care if the blood stains in the living room. It must be removed at once. Won't do the good, Miss Otis. Why not? It's the blood of Lady Eleanor. Who is Lady Eleanor? Sir Simon's wife. Died of a broken heart. Sir Simon's wickedness drove her to an early grave. Nothing will take out that spot. Oh, nonsense. A drop of lighter fluid will take care of it. I'll do it myself. Horace, hand me your lighter. And your handkerchief. I'll only use a corner of it. That stain has been admired by tourists. It's something of a local attraction. Nothing will take it out. Rubbish. I've never seen a red that vivid. That blood stain on top. But I put things in this house that would make anyone see a stain on end. We all like a bit of fantasy weeds, but there's no need to overdo it. It's no joke, Mr. Otis. The ghost is real. Don't do too much, Sir Simon. He's got a nasty temper. Look, the spot's disappearing. It's almost gone. Is gone. Drop of lighter fluid and some elbow grease will take care of the troublesome stain every time. You may serve tea when ready, Mrs. Omni. In all the years I've been here, no one has been able to remove that stain. Tea, Mrs. Omni? Yes, ma'am. And you can get a luggage weed. I don't believe my eyes. The stain is gone. But the luggage is still on the car trunk. I feel guilty not appreciating all the trouble we've gone to. Blood stains on the carpet. Two skeleton hands. Instead of a guest in the house, we have a ghost. <laughs> <laughs> Never saw a storm come up like that. I'll go to the You have dared mock the spirit of Simon de Canterville. You must pay for your insults. too fond of our village. All I could think of was getting back here. Big city life is so exhausting. Sit yourself down, Vicar. Thank you. 
I expect you'll be wanting to see Mrs. Otis. And Mr. Otis, too, if he's about. I do feel guilty not being here to greet them on their arrival. And tell me, what sort of people are they? Awfully American. Would you have tea, Vicar? Very kind of you, Jenny, but no. I'll tell them you're here. I won't be long. Take your time. And I do hope you're not causing any mischief, Sir Simon. Americans coming could be a blessing to the village. Lucy. Oh, hello. I'm Virginia Washington. And I'm the Reverend Augusta Dampier, vicar of the parish. Lady Candidville spoke of you. Please sit down. I've been away, London, a brief holiday. And where is Mrs. Dampier? Uh, she'll pay her respects tomorrow. Wednesday is my wife's day for respects. You're so formal in this part of the world. It's hard to get used to. I fear it's <laughs> Fred. People of this village are creatures of habit. By the way, how do you find Canterville Chase? I'm enchanted by it. You see, my sister and her husband have always wanted to live in England. Horace's business interests have done well enough that he can retire here at an early age. Naturally, I tagged along. You find nothing uh, strange about the place? You're speaking of Sir Simon. Yes. Sir Simon de Canterville has met his match in Horace Otis. Oh dear, you mean there's been some unpleasantness? Nothing we can't handle, Vicar. We Americans know how to handle ghosties and beasties and things that go bump in the night. <laughs> you sure have a strong grip, Mr. Otis. It comes from reading my readings. You've met Virginia. Oh yes, we were having a pleasant chat. My wife Lucy. So glad you dropped in. Please sit down. We've heard a great deal about you. That's flattery. <laughs> yes, you run the orphanage. Oh, I never refer to it as an orphanage, Mrs. Otis. I call it Children's Village. Oh. And you run the home for the old people. I never refer to it as a home, Mrs. Otis. What do you call it? A safe harbor. I encourage the residents to think of it as a hotel. That way they can check in when they wish and leave when they wish. Like guests. <whistles> that must cost a pretty penny. Yes, uh... Pretty penny. A horse ring for Mrs. Omni. Oh, no, please, I can't stay. Oh, one cup of tea before you leave? No, I'll just stop by to bid you all welcome. I'm glad you're comfortable. <laughs> well, it hasn't been easy sleeping here. You mean Sir Simon? <laughs> He's a noisy sort of pest. Oh, Mr. Otis, you mustn't talk like that. No telling what he'll do. It's more of a question of what I might do. You haven't antagonized him? No. But he's antagonized me. We hate anything interfering with the good night's sleep. The ghost gave us quite a start when he first appeared. He ran after my daughters with the sword. Even I don't do that. <laughs> no class at all. <laughs> Shrieking and yelling. But we soon put him in his place, however. And uh, what, what happened? <laughs> the next day, he was wandering upstairs, and I gave him an oil can. Oh, and, and well, what did you do? I simply said, my dear man, I must insist on you oiling that oversized tin can you're wearing. You didn't. I did, too. And then what happened? He fell over backwards, and he rolled right down the stairs. Woke the entire house. Uh, I'm afraid you don't grasp the gravity of the situation. Sir Simon can be quite malicious. In my book, he's a fraud and a fake. He allows me to race the blood stain every night, since none of the servants will do it. Only it's back the next morning. And he's forever changing the color. One morning it's rose, the next it's purple. The old boy's colorblind. Well, and Lady Canterville did tell us what he did to the Duchess of Bolton. Sir Simon is against good American horse sense. You know what they say about horse sense, Vicar. It dwells in a stable, mine. The ghost isn't going to scare us again. It's going to be the other way around. Lady Canterville's nephew just rang up. Uh, that would be Lord Cecil. What did he want? He said if it wouldn't be much trouble, he'd like to stop by for a moment. Oh, I just love visitors. Mrs. Omni, I was trying to tell these charming people that Sir Simon can be dangerous. It isn't easy, Vicar. Americans are rebels. Come on. Exactly what can that pile of floating ectoplasm do? Mrs. Biddy, the former housekeeper, woke up one morning and saw a skeleton seated in her armchair, reading her diary. How very rude of the skeleton. Poor thing had to be confined to bed for six weeks. The skeleton? No, Mrs. Biddy, just too much imagination. 
Once you give in to Sir Simon's foolishness, you become a willing victim. He scattered my husband's papers all over the upstairs hall. A petulant thing to do. Immature. He has been acting unusually vexed, especially for such an old ghost. The second night we were here, we heard him rattling about in a suit of armor. That's how he frightens Jenny. And what did you do? Do? What any sensible man would do. What would any sensible man do, Mr. Otis? What did you do? I said, boo. Boo? Boo. Oh, I don't believe anyone has ever said boo to Sir Simon before. <sighs> Enough talk about that silly ghost. Vicar, I wonder if we could have a visit to the children's village? Well, what better time than the present? I was on my way there now. Do join me. Great idea. Oh, Lady Canterville's nephew. I'll see him. Go along, both of you. Invite him for tea. The English can't see him <laughs> without it. I will. Come along, Lucy. Vicar, it's a beautiful day for a walk. Oh, we're coming. Your sister and brother are confident people, aren't they? They don't let any grass grow under their feet. Grass grow under their feet? What a funny language you Americans speak. Oh, well, there'll be trouble, <coughs> serious trouble. The vicar is upset. Sir Simon is an upsetting influence. Please go along and see if there's anything extra nice for tea. Yes, miss. There is one thing. Yes? Perhaps Madame Balaklava can help. Who's Madame Balaklava? A spirit medium, a psychic researcher, quite successful in ridding other estates of ghosts and ghouls. You're not serious. If you really want to get rid of Sir Simon, and I'm not sure I approve, Madame Balaklava is the only one who can help. Give it back! One of those is mine! Not if I have them both. I'm going to get it back if I have to break your arm! Get what? She has my hairspray! You girls ought to know better. You do nothing but run in and out of every room. You're too old for all this adolescent nonsense anyway. You were saying something about a Madame Balaklava? She's famous in these parts. What for? For one thing, she got rid of Martin the Maniac. Who's he? He's sometimes known as the Master Mystery. What was he famous for? He's, he terrorized Milford Manor for centuries. And this Madame Balakova exercise, is that what you're saying? I'm not sure about that, miss, but she certainly got rid of him. Not only that, she banished Hester the Horrid from Heathcliff House. You're putting us on. No, miss. Madame Balakova is a genius when it comes to the unknown. If she's so great, then why hasn't she been here before? No one has requested her presence. She doesn't de-ghost unless she's invited. De-ghost? Lots of mumbo jumbo. I can accept the presence of Sir Simon. In a way, I feel rather sorry for the poor man. But a ghost named Martin the Maniac and another called Hester the Horrid is going too far. You don't want to forget Lady Joan the Graveless. What was she famous for? The popular press of the day referred to her as the cop snatcher of Chetsy Barn. You're fortunate, Mrs. Omni, that Sir Simon has never done you any harm. I am indeed. Other family servants haven't fared so well. A dear friend of mine was driven to the brink of despair, courtesy of the Vampire Duchess. Vampire Duchess? This is better than the Late Late Show. Yes, the Duchess of Stardust. Until Madame Balakova visited Startup Castle, no one would go near the place. As long as Sir Simon isn't too malicious, I see no reason to send for a psychic researcher. As you wish, miss. Virginia, don't you love all this stuff? Stuff is right. Stuff and nonsense. I don't see why Mrs. Umley feels she has to keep us entertained with all these ghost stories. Martin the Maniac. Come on, Wendy. I'm ready. Ready for what? You'll hear about it later. Women of mystery, aren't you? The Duke of Cheshire, Miss Virginia. Ah, uh, Mrs. Otis, this, this is a pleasure. I'm not Mrs. Otis. She's my sister. And then you're? Virginia Washington. Virginia Washington. What could be more American than that? I trust I'm not intruding, but I was driving this way. I thought I'd call and introduce myself. I'm glad you did. We wanted to meet you, but my sister and her husband have gone with the vicar. A to a children's village. A wonderful place. Too bad, though. Why do you say that, your lordship? The place is bankrupt. Hopelessly so. The vicar has a warm heart, but no business sense. I noticed his church seems a little worse for the wear. The roof is leaking and the windows are cracked. And on a cold day, a congregation shivers through its prayers. I trust he's being a gentleman. 
I can't give you a good report about your kinsman. He probably wants you out of this place. He never could abide strangers. We'll be friends in no time. You and I, me. Sir Simon and myself. Cecil, I wonder. Do you know the meaning of the inscription on the landing? You mean what's inscribed in the hallway in the window? Yes. When a golden girl can win, prayer from out the lips of sin. When the barren almond fares, and the child gives away its tears, then all the house shall be still, and peace come to Canterville. It's painted in such curious letters, almost faded out. It took me a long time to decipher it all. I'm sorry, I can't help you. I don't know what it means. It's been there for centuries, like a bloodstain. I see. <coughs> Will you stay for tea? No, I'd be delighted. Um, we'll see my brother-in-law. We'll be, we'll be back in plenty of time. Uh, then we have time for a walk. I, I'd like to see the garden. Oh, happy to. I was hoping you'd say that. Remember, you must never say no to the relative of Sir Simon de Canterville. And the old boy might take offense. I make it a point never to offend a ghost. Ah! Doom and gloom, thunder and spite, curses on all who mock my might. Where is everyone? Pass it all. Miss Virginia? <laughs> I'll turn your hair white, my girlie. <laughs> I'll rattle your you bones when I catch you. <laughs> Did you yell at Jenny? No, it was me. And I'm going to plant you in your own garden. Ah, <laughs> Kick them out yet, I will, I will, I'll kick them out yet, I will. Ah! Oh, yeah? Take this. Yeah! Beware! Oh, beware. Yeah, how dare you? I am Sir Simon de Canterville. So? Yeah! Wretched yeah. female. You're going to scare yourself. Yeah, stop it, stop it. Who's afraid of the gas? Yeah, wretched female. You great big grizzly ghoul. Do you really want to fight? Uh, no, no. Come back. Get any sleep tonight. Why? It's Madame Bullock with her mom. The psychic? Yes. Mr. Otis says he's had it with the ghost. Oh, Sir Simon has been behaving something awful. I'm sorry to hear that. He got into Weed's greenhouse and broke a lot of glass. I've never known Sir Simon to be so willful. Even Mrs. Omni has turned against him. Oh, he materialized in the kitchen and poured flour all over the floor. And then he turned her custard as that sour. That's shocking. We think Madame Balaklava will set things right. I don't know what the vicar is going to say about this. Augustus takes a dim view of mediums and psychics. Mrs. Dampier, we didn't expect to see you tonight. I didn't expect to be here, but the vicar has a nasty cold, so I'm taking on his duties. Don't stand like a stick, Jenny. Run along and fetch your mistress. Yes, ma'am. What's this about Madame Balaklava coming here this evening? If you could see and hear some of the things Sir Simon's been up to, Jenny was telling me. Still, I don't see the necessity for summoning that dreadful block of a fraud to Canterville Chase. There's no control in the ghost. The ghost said he's gone bananas. Bananas? Oh, excuse me. When one is around Americans, one is inclined to pick up their peculiar expression. I knew there'd be trouble when I first heard the chase was for sale. Sir Simon has been generally disagreeable. He's tried to keep Lord Cecil and Virginia apart. How? Every time Lord Cecil is about to say something romantic, Sir Simon makes him have a violent sneezing fit. How ungallant of Sir Simon. Do come sit and tell me more. The other evening at dinner, he took the roast right off the table and sent it sailing to the ceiling. Good gracious. It was stuck up there, dripping gravy, for almost two days. He had a dreadful time getting it down. Finally, we had to harpoon it with a pitchfork. Like living in a chamber of horrors. So Madame Balakova was sent for. She's a charlatan. 
She got rid of the march from the maniac, as to the horrid, Lady Jane the graveless. You're an impressionable woman, Mrs. Umney. Has anyone thought of speaking calmly and rationally to Sir Simon? Won't do no good speaking to the ghost. He's set in his way. Uh -oh. What an unexpected pleasure. I hope this isn't an imposition. No, indeed. We're all excited tonight. I wish you didn't feel it necessary to call on Madame Bulakova. I'm afraid we have no choice. <coughs> At first, we were quite, quite willing to live and let live. Now we're afraid unless something's done, the ghost might do serious harm. Has Mrs. Alney told you about the roast? Most distressing. I'll come to the reason for my visit, if I may. We're going to have a church bazaar soon. To raise funds for the children's village. Yes, and for safe harbor. Good. They owe everyone in town. That'll be all, Mrs. Umney. Yes, ma'am. I don't know what we'd do without Mrs. Umney. At times, she acts more like a member of the family than a house. I wouldn't let her get away. Quite difficult to find good servants these days. We'll hang on to her. Is there something you might donate for the bazaar? All in a good cause. Sure, we could think of something. Hey, Mom, Dad's sitting out on the steps waiting for that witch. <sighs> Madame Balakova is not a witch. She's a psychic researcher. <sighs> Bet you hear about that bazaar, Mrs. Dampier. That's true. We have to think of something extra special to donate. That's easy. What do you suggest? Why don't we donate Sir Simon's old suit of armor? His armor? Oh, dear. Oh, that's a marvelous suggestion. And we can get a good night's sleep for a change, too. But, Pamela, should we deprive Sir Simon of his armor? Why not? Oh, it's yours with our blessing. <laughs> the vicar should be pleased. I ought to bring a good price. Madame Bolokhova is just driven up. I don't want to see her. She's an awful bore. I'll be leaving now. Thank you for the armor. Jenny, see to the door? Yes, ma'am. Tonight is not a seance. We're simply bidding farewell to the ghost. I bet Madame Balaklava will perform the exorcism with incense and incantation. I'm going to question her about Martin the Maniac. Oh. Sorry to disappoint you two, but whatever Madame Balaklava does will be done without your presence. What? No telling what might happen. You mean we're going to miss all the excitement? Tonight is not supposed to be fun and games. This is serious business. What a jet. Please, can't we stay? Go on, off to your rooms, watch the BBC or something. Can we get something to eat first? Oh, I suppose, but be quiet while Madame Belofa was here. Come on, Pam, what a life. We should be in here with the ghost. It's definitely discrimination. I don't understand old people. Old people? Goodness, Lucy, were we ever that young? The place positively reeks of ghostly vibrations. That's not so surprising, considering Sir Simon is always up to something. <laughs> Madam Balakova, I'd like to introduce you to my wife, Lucy, and my sister-in-law, Virginia. We're so, uh, please, you could go. My poor, poor woman. Oh, you must have suffered. Your husband has told me of your terrible experiences with Sir Simon. Danger is in the air. What kind of danger? Aha! What? what? The blood of Lady Eleanor de Canterville. They say she died of a broken heart. Aha! What? what? The draped room. It's all bricked up. With bricks. Behind those drapes, the brothers of Lady Eleanor changed the Simon to the wall. With food and water just out of reach. How awful. The crimes of Sir Simon were awful too. Did you know he sacked the Paris church? No. The very church that stands in Canterbury Village today. Sir Simon was a terror. He still is. Yeah, but Martin was fond of him. Martin? Martin the Maniac. I banished him from Milford Manor months ago. Uh, is there anything special that we should be doing? How do you mean? Preparing for Sir Simon's departure. We've already made arrangements to sell us to the van. Oh, that's wonderful, darling. Absolutely wonderful. Madame Balaklava, you must help these Americans, madam. The ghost has been wicked. Never fear, Madame Balaklava's here. Oh. Now, 
I want, I want Mr. and Mrs. Oh, gee, 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 gee. I want Mr. and Mrs. always here. Yes, very good. Yes. And then, oh. And where cool. do you want me? Well, um, over there, by the French doors, yes. Should sure, because the time to please in the garden, you must stop here. How? First, you must thrust out your arm. Oh, you must be strong. You must be strong. Thrust out your arm. First, you must thrust out your arm. Then you must murmur a low moan. Sounds like a cow in pain. Please! Sorry. Anything else? Should the ghost attempt to leap by you, you must say, Obey, obey, you'll not escape today. Turn back, I say, and fade away. You got that? I feel ridiculous. <laughs> but I must insist. Anything to help. Well, darling, I'm sure the ghost won't even make for the garden. By the time I'm done with him, he'll be missed in the moors. Oh, I'm ready. So am I. Lower the lights, please, Mrs. Omni. Yes, ma'am. <coughs> oh, I'm scared of the dark. Silence! <laughs> I'm dreaming. I see a spirit on the <coughs> stairs. What's he wearing? It looks like a large soup can. That's Sir Simon. He's in a suit of armor. Shh. Yes, yes, it is, Sir Simon de Canterbury. I can see his two beady eyes staring from beneath the visor of his helmet. Shame, shame on you, restless spirit! Somehow I don't feel right about all this. Then he materializes, no one must cry out to provoke him. For only then can I work the necessary power to banish him from Canterville Chase forever. Simon de Canterville, I honor you to appear! Perhaps he's losing his hearing. He is very old. Shh! Baleful spirit, how so haunting. Cease! Desist your power flaunting! Up, be gone at end of day! Fight or fly forever! Stay! Oh no, Madame Lovelova, you've got it backwards. It's fly and fly, you cannot stay. Pinch of pepper, pinch of salt, lock you from your secret vault. We go bomb in full in bloom. Stay forever in this room! No, no, that's not right. It's banished ever from this room. <laughs> Never more these chambers roam. Hold it, specter, leave this home! Other ghosts from Vale or Hill. Come all you to Canterville! It's supposed to be never come to Canterville. <laughs> well, uh, how was I? You did everything backwards. I did? You invited Sir Simon to stay! And all sorts of other ghosts. Other ghosts? That's absurd. Who calls Bob and the maniac from his sleep? You've done it for sure. I don't understand how I got things twisted. <laughs> Who takes <gasps> me from my rest? Beware, beware! It turns to the horrid! What's she doing here? You <laughs> tell me. Where am I? Oh my! What is this? Place. Take it down the grave list. Oh, you better do something in a hurry, Madame Balaklava, or I'll see that they take away your license. <laughs> you can't do that. Why not? Because I don't have a license. <laughs> Someone will pay for disturbing my slumber. Who's she? It's the Duchess of Stardust, the one they call the vampire. The vampire? All we need now is Sir Simon. Ah, you have me, you witch! You thought you'd get rid of me, did you? But I've got a trick or two up my sleeve. I made you say things backwards. And now I've got an army to keep my place at Canterville Chase. What are we going to do now? I don't know what you're going to do. But I know what I'm going to do. What? what? I'm getting out of here. <laughs> <laughs>
go get him! One English ghost can take on a household of Americans any day. Sir Simon de Canterville has only begun to fight! me. After all the glory, some wretched modern Americans come here and mock my spirit. Your nerves are quite shattered. I will have my revenge! Lady Joan is correct. There's nothing the matter with my nerves. It's my pride that's suffering. Martin means the Americans. Oh, I don't. They'll behave a bit more sensibly after Madame Balaklava's fiasco. I haven't told you the worst. There's more? Yes. They've installed something called television. Television? What's television? I'm not quite sure, really, but from what I understand, it makes a great deal of noise and never really says anything. How can you hide with a thing like that in the house? That would destroy the mood. You'll forbid it, of course. No, oh, I shall certainly make my opinions known. Here, here. Well, you must excuse me, Sir Simon. I must be getting on my way. So must I. I want to stop off at the church graveyard and tell a few old friends how I'm back in town. It's always a pleasure, Sir Simon. We must get together more often. We only seem to see each other when Madame Bullock is messing about. Good night, Sir Simon. Oh, good night, my dear. Thank you for coming. You're looking reasonably well. Considering... Oh, kind of you to say so, Duchess. Thank you. Adieu. Adieu. Well, you seem to have things under control. Chin up, if I'm a let, I walk. <laughs> Good to see you again, you maniac. If you don't mind, I'll be going out the back of me. Maybe there's a maid I might terrify. <laughs> Jenny is quite good at being terrified. Might give her a try. I'll take your advice. See you in a hundred years or so, old boy. <laughs> a hundred years? <laughs> Yours were just as Sir Simon a hundred years. <laughs> you, Sir Simon, are an inspiration to us all. Oh, thank you, Hester. I always said you were horrid, but intelligent. Good night, that gentle spirit. Good night. Fly carefully. Nothing like Jesus has a magic before. That doesn't help us much. What are we going to do now? Look safe enough. Do you really think they're gone? Look for yourself. It's Martin we have to be careful of. He's a fond of throwing things. Not as fond as I am of throwing you out. Oh, Horace, please. You're upset with me, Mr. Otis. How could you tell? You could hardly expect us to be pleased. We asked you for the specific purpose of getting Sir Simon out of our hair. And instead of that, we find ourselves surrounded by a bunch of of, of weirdo ghosts. Oh, well, only Lady Joan is a weirdo. The rest are merely eccentric. Ha! I shall return home and consult my cookbook. Cookbook? It's where I keep my incantation recipes. I'll solve this dilemma. Never fear Madame Balaklava's here. Yeah, I've heard that before. Just leave, Madame Balaklava. But Horace, what about Sir Simon? We will deal with him ourselves. Ah! Who's that? Sounds like Jenny. It is. Oh, oh, horrible, oh, horrible. Oh, that's what it was. And what has the ghost done now? It was a dog ghost. It was the one in the mask. The Lone Ranger? Oh, Horace, this is no joke. Obviously. The child is referring to Martin the Maniac, also known as the Masked Mystery. Jenny, you have my permission to show Madame Balaklava to the door. What door? Any door. Just get her out of here before I make a spirit out of her. Yes, sir. This way, Madame Balaklava. I'll think of something. Out! I can't understand it. Bail for spirit, house of something. What do you suppose went wrong? Sir Simon is much too clever for her. We're underestimating this fellow. Wasn't it wonderful? We were chased half a mile at least. That's your idea of something wonderful? We fly right back home about this. We saw Lady Joan float by. She looked lovely. Just like the heroine on Bride of Frankenstein. And she didn't speak. Cut out that kind of talk. It gives me goosebumps. Oh, Madame 
side of the love puzzle. She's in a wretched state. Her feelings have been hurt. How do you think we feel? You girls get to your room. What if there's more excitement? If there is, we'll tell you in the morning. Let's go. I know. We can booby trap the stairs with wire. Yeah. Will you be wanting anything else, Mrs. Otis? No, I think we've had enough of everything for one evening. In that case, good night. Ah. Good night, Mrs. Oni. I'll be glad when the girls are off to school. It will certainly calm down Canterville Chase. <laughs> Virginia, how's Weeds doing? He's threatening to resign. Oh, what now? One of the spirits locked him in the potting shed after wetting him down with the garden hose. The poor man shocked and shivered. I'll have a talk with him. If Sir Simon wants open warfare, that's what he's going to get. Madame Blockleva says that we have nothing to fear since the other ghosts don't, can't, don't belong here. They can't stay. I wouldn't believe a thing she said. She couldn't read palms at a carnival for kangaroos. Why don't you go to bed? You look tired. I am actually very tired. I think I'll stay up for a while. I have a few letters to write. Are you hoping Cecil will call? Maybe. He is charming and Lady Canterville does seem fond of you. I don't need a matchmaker. Go on. I was just trying to help. Really, Sir Simon, your behavior is extremely childish. Beware, beware. You're a silly old thing. Yeah, a silly old thing? Now I am going to terrify you. <laughs> Please be careful with that thing. If you break anything, my sister will be terribly upset. I hear your pleas for mercy, but I am heartless. <laughs> if you're going to clank around all night, I suggest you do it in the cellar dungeon. You're becoming an awful bore in that rusty suit of armor. I hear your pleas for mercy. I am heartless. Your fate is sealed. Your tears have no effect on me. Tears? Ah. What tears? You don't think for one moment I take you seriously. Don't you? When I was told the place had a resident ghost, I was charmed. But I wasn't told the resident ghost was also a pest and a nuisance. A pest? You dare call Sir Simon de Canterville a pest? I could call you a great many things, but I think pest says it all. But you're supposed to be shaking in fear. I'm sensible. I have no intention of shaking. The truth of the matter is, I'm sorry for you. I'm sorry? In much the same way I'd be sorry for a child who throws tantrums to get attention. <laughs> now take off that silly hat with a feather. I thought it had a nice touch. Dressing up in costumes just to get noticed. Bringing your friends when you're uninvited. <laughs> I invited Lady Joan and the others. Yes, but this doesn't belong to you anymore. I realize that you as a ghost have certain unalienable rights. But you must realize that we, living here, have rights too. The girls have been giving you a hard time. But they're off to school soon, so no one will trouble you. If you behave. Behave? I must rattle my chains and groan through keyholes. It's my only reason for existing. That's no reason at all for existing. I must say, breaking your wife's heart was shameful. How did I know she was going to suffer a broken heart? Besides, I don't think it was fair of her brothers to starve me to death. I could fix you a sandwich. I don't want a sandwich! <laughs> I want respect! There's no need to shout! Forgive me. It's been a trying night. <laughs> May I? You are much nicer than the rest of your rude, vulgar, and dishonest family. It is you who are rude, vulgar, and dishonest. You think I don't know who keeps stealing tubes of color from my cage box? Look at that spot. Who ever heard of Emerald Green Blood? Well, what do you expect me to do? It's difficult to get real blood these days. As for the color, that's entirely a matter of taste. The Cantervilles have blue blood, for instance. I know you Americans don't care for things like that. Stick <laughs> to the subject. You feel we have behaved badly toward you. You have! We feel you've behaved badly toward us. Bah! 
We're not going to get anywhere. We're always at each other's throats. And speaking of throats. Did you hear what I did to Lady Stuckfield? She had to wear a back black velvet band around her throat to hide the mark of five fingers. We must reach a compromise. Yeah. If you'll confine your ghostly goings on to certain hours of the night and in authorized parts of the house, I assure you, you'll be treated with dignity. And if I refuse? Horace might find some way to ship you off to America. He's clever, you know. Uh, America? <laughs> You'd be quite a curiosity there. Curiosity? Uh, if that doesn't work, I'm sure Madame Blackwood can find some new way to... No, you must never let that woman return to this house. Ah, then you are afraid of what she can do. <laughs> Sir Simon, we're not leaving. Nor am I. What's it to be, then? Compromise or catastrophe? You're an intelligent girl, aren't you? Then you agree? On one condition. Which is? You make me that sandwich. I'd be honored. I've had another 400 years of worked up quite an appetite. Uh, with good English mustard. <laughs> about going to a boarding school. They're used to the freedom of a public high. Well, they're disappointed in the ghost, too. He's been quiet as a mouse. Well, let's be grateful for that. I do hope the vicar does well. <coughs> this is only and all the other ladies say it would be a tragedy if Reverend Duffier had to close down his charities. The vicar has a large heart but a small bank balance. I also heard your husband say that it would take a small fortune to save them. You shouldn't talk like that, Jenny. It's telling tales out of school. Ah, oh, Mrs. Otis. Hello, Reverend Dampier. Everything is going splendidly. Once people heard the bazaar was going to be held on the grounds of Canterville Chase, they flocked. I can't thank you enough. It's the least we could do. And the girls have told me that Sir Simon has been the model of a gentleman lately. Excellent news. Hard to understand, Vicar. Don't know what's come over the ghost. It must be hard on a spirit these days. People have so many other things on their minds. Took them a while to get used to the foreigners, I suspect. No offense, Mama. Newcomers, Jenny, has a much softer sound. Oh, I'm so glad you and your husband found your home in our village. We need new blood. That's another thing. Sir Simon has let the spot almost fade away. Oh, well, at least it doesn't keep changing colors anymore. We'll need your help with the weight gets some good, Mrs. Otis. Certainly. Weed says Sir Simon's suit of armor will take two men to live. Okay, I'll tell my husband. I believe we'll make several hundred pounds today. Come along, Jenny. We may need you. <laughs> Certainly. <coughs> this came for you, Vicar. Hand delivered. Oh, it, it's from the bank. Anything wrong? I should think so. The bank is probably just making a donation to the bazaar. People are saying the bank is going to foreclose on you. But pay them no mind. Trust in Providence. Whatever you say, Vicar. <coughs> oh, dear. Dear, dear, dear. 
what wonderful weather we're having. It's lovely. Getting away from the crowd, Reverend? Oh, I just popped in to congratulate your sister on our success. Things do seem to be going well. Not well enough, I'm afraid. I think I'm going to sneeze. Uh, Sir Simon, remember our agreement? Oh, oh, that's a relief. What is it? Dear Reverend Dampier, much as it grieves us here at the bank, we have no alternative but to begin legal action to take possession of the properties now known <coughs> as Children's Village and Safe Harbor. Surely there's something that can be done. Unless we hear from you within 24 hours and plans to remedy the outstanding debts, we will commence action. We regret the unpleasantness and hope you will settle the account. The letter is almost rude. It's signed Lord Arville Fitzwilliam. I shall have a few choice words with Lord Fitzwilliam. Oh, he has every reason to be annoyed with me. He's extended the loan several times, but I've kept putting him off hoping something would come up. I'm afraid banks aren't in the business of losing money. The truth is, both the harbor and the village are bankrupt. They have been for some time. But you're speaking in terms of money alone. What about the old people who have their independence and the children? We mustn't tell the others yet. It would ruin the bazaar. If you'll please excuse me. The bank won't foreclose. They can't. It would be inhuman. I wouldn't be so optimistic. There's no point in being negative. That's too easy. Now rain. I'm afraid this isn't the vicar's lucky day. Uh, there are some, a lot of tables uncovered. I'm going to go see if I can help out. Oh, the party's going! Some of the guests are going for the greenhouse, although there's a huddles under trees. Please come in this way. Oh, no, Sessa. I'm wondering if you could give Mr. Ernest and the vicar some help. They're holding down the stretch of rollers. Yeah, the rest I said the rock and the rain. I'll put the chair. Everyone, please sit down. The rain can't last. What bad luck. I wonder if he had anything to do with it. Who? Sir Simon. I can assure you, Sir Simon did not cause the rain. His assaulter took his note at all. <coughs> Once he ruined the garden party for Lord Sussex's mother. How? He waited until the guests were on the far side of the lawn, and then he caused thunder and lightning. I don't see how you can hold Sir Simon accountable for that. This was the only place it happened. Sunshine everywhere else in the village. So Simon, no doubt about it. Well, we don't have any problems with the ghost anymore. Is that because of Madame Rothwell? Please don't mention a name. It upsets Sir Simon. You've become rather protective toward him. Yes, Virginia has grown quite fond of him. Beg pardon, Mrs. Otis. Someone to see you says it's quite important. Uh, who is it? It's Madame Rothwell. Oh. I suppose I must see her. No! Virginia, what on earth has gone into you? Show her in, Mrs. Dummy. Yes, ma'am. Lucy, you mustn't see her. She mustn't stay. Just because she dresses tacky doesn't mean she can't stay. Besides, I've never seen you act like this before. I've never met a psychic researcher. They are much like anyone else, I imagine. Only different. Wonderful news, Mrs. Otis. Not only have I discovered where Sir Simon caused me to go wrong, but I know why he was able to do it. So tell me. I should have remembered. In an unfamiliar house such as this, it requires a minimum of two visits before my powers are effective. You must leave immediately. Ah! Why, Miss Yenny? <coughs> because, because I promised someone. Promised someone what? That Madame Blanca would never come here again. You're upset, Virginia. But your worries are over. If everyone will remain perfectly quiet, I shall rid Canterville Chase of Sir Simon in a matter of seconds. How thrilling. An <laughs> unexpected treat. Let her do it. It's the only way to get rid of her. Madame Malakova, please go. Baleful spirit, house of haunting. Cease! <coughs> Desist your power flaunting. Off be gone at end of day. Fire and fly, you cannot stay! I love you! Strong as a psychic researcher and strong as Balaklava! Charge! Look at the vicar! Bitch of pepper, bitch of salt, lock you from your secret vault! Stop it! Twig of almond, full and bloom, vanish ever from this room! Your fate is sealed! Yes, and I'll tell you what he might do. Come, Mr. Musk, 
charge! Yeah! Never mind these chambers for a board inspector! Leave this home! Other ghosts from Miller Hill? Never! <laughs> Good day, Virginia. And I have but one thing to say to you. <laughs> well, that got rid of that old witch. <laughs> I'm disappointed in you. Me? What have I done? Don't play the innocent. Why should you be upset if I ran off that psychic researcher? Besides, you promised she'd never return. She came here uninvited. It had nothing to do with me, and you know it. I'm talking about the weather. You darkened the skies, didn't you? You did it deliberately, and you even tried to make Cecil have another sneezing. Well, what if I did? I have to have fun, don't I? I thought we struck a bargain to respect one another. What people say about you is true. You're completely selfish. I don't like it when you're angry with me. I got bored. You make that sound like an excuse for anything. I'm not going to stay here and listen to you. I am so lonely and unhappy. Please, don't go. tricks. I really don't know what to do. I want to sleep and I cannot. I could fix you a glass of warm milk. You don't understand. I haven't slept in over 400 years. Forgive me for spoiling the bazaar. I just can't bear to see other people happy when I'm so miserable. There's no place where you can find rest? Yes. Beyond the garden. Beyond the pine woods. The grass grows long and deep. The nightingales sing all night long. You mean... not of this earth? I've been so wicked in my life, I'm not allowed to cross over. If only I could. To have no yesterday, no tomorrow. To forget time. To be at peace. I wish I could help you. You can. You know the prophecy on the window? I don't know what the words mean. You have a golden heart. You're good. The words mean that you must weep for my sins, for I have no tears, and pray for my soul, for I have no faith. Would you, Miss Virginia? I'm not sure I understand. Hey, come with me. Where? Is it dangerous? No, well, you will see fearful shapes in the darkness, but and you will hear wicked voices that whisper in your ear, but they will not harm you. For against the courage of a good heart, they are powerless. But if you are afraid to come and plead my case, I am forever doomed to dwell within these walls. Poor ghost. Will you help? I'll do what I can. And not be afraid. I'll try not to be. Oh, fearful shapes will frighten you in the darkness. How do we begin? By passing beneath the almond tree. I am so weary of being wicked. Walking here to protect you, Jenny. They're walking into the mist. I can barely make them out. I wonder if she'll ever come back. Oh, don't say that. Do something. Don't, don't worry, I'll rescue her. I'm brave. They're disappearing. Keep, keep, keep calm. I'm here. So someone's gone up in a purple phone. Miss Virginia's gone too. I'm so scared on my feet. I catch you. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what you gonna do that for? Come back. Virginia, come back!
relax. I don't want to relax. I want my sister back. I've searched every room again. They haven't come back. They're not hiding anywhere. Jamie, you're absolutely sure of what you saw? They disappeared into the, the drizzle. I, I ran after them, calling for Miss Virginia to come back. But I was too late. The sun's up now. Maybe that'll help them find Virginia. We're beat. We've been up and down the lane looking for her. We need a break. In over 400 years, Sir Simon has never been known to indulge in kidnapping. It's not his style. He didn't seem to be kidnapping her, Mrs. Umney. She seemed to be going with him willingly. Talk sense, you silly girl. Where have you been? Probably off fainting somewhere. And not to talk like that, Jenny. You had me to this fall. That was all. Oh, never mind all that. Where have you searched? We went down by the gypsy camp. You don't think Sir Simon tried to sell her as a fortune teller? Oh, my God, my sister is a fortune teller with gypsies. But wouldn't the gypsies be afraid? Not of the spirit. They know all about such things. Well, what did you find at the camp? Nothing, but I got me palm red. You're no help whatsoever. <laughs> so Simon had been acting so good. <laughs> what about the pie man in Balaklava's face? Something upset him. Something's making him act like this. I've never walked so long and so far in my life. You brought her back? No. I've been to the police. They're upset with Sir Simon. But they don't see what they could do about it. Why not? Seems there's no precedent. They have no experience in arresting a ghost. Perhaps Scotland Yacht could help. Yeah. The constable has a call for London. The minute he gets an okay, he'll issue a warrant. A warrant? For a ghost? A horse you go as mad as the rest! Perhaps Madame the Lockover could help. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Oh, hello all. No one answered the door. Lucy dear, I'm so sorry. I feel somewhat guilty, but I did warn you about Sir Simon. You didn't say he was likely to kidnap my sister-in-law. Oh. Well, the old boy's never done anything like this before. That's cold comfort, Cecil. I checked with the station manager, and no one fitting Virginia's description or Sir Simon's was seen getting on the train. Don't expect the ghost to buy a ticket, do you? What I can't understand is why Virginia would go. Casual ghosts can't make anyone do anything against one's will. Mrs. Ogis, Mrs. Ogis. What is it, Vicar? She's back. She's coming this way. Oh, thank God. Behind her. Oh, my God, baby, that's so You better rest. You shouldn't have worried. I was all right. I was with the goat. That's what we were worried about. Where is Sir Simon? Sir Simon is gone. Gone? Where? To his rest. He knows he was wicked, but he was really sorry. What's that? Sir Simon gave me this chest of beautiful jewels before he went. Oh. Blended. And so many. Rubies and pearls. And diamonds. Oh, my. I pleaded for him. Well, with whom? I promised Sir Simon I would keep it secret. Now, you wouldn't want to keep any secrets from me, now, Duke, would you? I can tell you that thanks to Sir Simon, I know what a precious thing life is. I want one of the bracelets. I want a ruby ring. That'll make everyone at boarding school jealous. That's enough. That's enough. Besides, the jewels belong to Lady Canterville. <laughs> no, Mr. Otis. The jewels are clearly Virginia. And I'm sure if we try to take them from her, Sir Simon would be out of his grave in a fortnight. Right in the devil was all of us. None of you understand. What's to understand, miss? He gave you a handsome present. Tidy fortune. The jewels aren't for me. They're for all of us. For Canterville. Sir Simon sacked them from the village church hundreds of years ago. He gave them to me so I could put them to use. Vicar? You, you, you're giving them to me? It was Sir Simon's wish. Oh, I, I hoped for something like this, but I never expected it would happen. Children's village can continue. I'd say, Father, we should go tell them. We don't tell that anymore. A new roof for the church, too, Vicar. I know, I know. Oh, Virginia, how can I ever thank you? It's the ghost, you should say. Oh, look at that. Do you see what I see? What is it? That was the old almond tree. It's a moon. Half a dollar of a sudden life, didn't it? I think it means heaven has forgiven Sir Simon. We all owe Sir Simon for something. If it wasn't for Sir Simon, I would have never met Virginia. Let's hear it for Sir Simon. Mr. Otis. Not again. I understand. Sir, si Sir Simon has vacated the premises. He has no thanks to you. Well, then you need another ghost. <laughs> another ghost? 
There are so many of them that are unemployed these days, and I'm partly to blame. We don't need another ghost. I wonder what Sir Simon would think of all of this. But Lady Canterville, it was Sir Simon himself who made the suggestion to me before he crossed over. He appeared to me in the costume of Robin Hood, which I thought was rather spirited in a music of him. <laughs> Come in, please. Come on, you know too many ghosts, that's a wonder. Stand up, people, stand up! <coughs> Martin the Maniac, may I present Mr. and Mrs. Ho Horace Otis and Otis from America. A great pleasure, sir. I've always wanted to visit the colonies. Delighted. Lady Joan the Graveless, the Otis family. Charm. My, my, your house is lovely. The Vampire Duchess. Delighted you could drop in. You are too kind. Pardon me, pardon me. I'm Hester the Horrid. Are those jeans you're wearing? Uh, yes, these are jeans. They look so comfy. Sir Simon may be gone, but his spirits linger on. <laughs> <laughs>